What better way to start the week than with an English breakfast? Time to recap James Sharman's picks from the past weekend in the Premier League. Eddie Howe was in the dugout for the first time, but he has a huge job on his hands trying to dig this Newcastle team out of the hole that they're in. Three points for Arsenal meant they remain in fifth place and seem to have stabilized after their own difficult start to the season. New manager CVG had another great afternoon as his Villa side beat Patrick Vieira's Palace. That's two and two for Gerrard and he looks every bit a bona fide EPL manager. His old club Liverpool broke a record for most goals so far at this point in the season in their 4-0 demolition of Southampton with Thiago finally getting a run in the team and scoring again in this one. Norwich Wolves saw the Canaries grab a much needed point as new manager Dean Smith tries to steady the ship. Charman correctly called a plus 240 draw as Brighton drew nil-nil with Leeds while Burnley and Spurs, they were postponed due to bad weather, aka some snow. It wouldn't happen here in Canada, just saying. James Madison was on fire as Leicester beat Watford 4-2 and new Watford manager Claudio Ranieri got the hero's welcome he deserved from the home fans, but Madison was the star of the day, scoring once and setting up two more for Jamie Vardy. City did what they do best in a near the top of the table clash with West Ham. Another three points here leaves them in second place, one point off the top. And Chelsea against Manchester United was the big surprise of the weekend with Ronaldo relegated to the bench and the otherwise unflappable Jorginho handing Jadon Sancho a free run on goal. Jorginho, he made up for his mistake with a penalty, but neither side could do enough to break the deadlock. Let's bring in James to talk about his picks from this past weekend in the Premier League. All right, James, a pretty good weekend for you in the Premier League. Five and four uh, with your picks, starting with Manchester City. Um, not really an obvious one, I think, at least for me against this West Ham team uh, to go outright with the pick. But once again, Pep Guardiola's team showing their class without De Bruyne, without Jack Grealish, without Phil Foden. Obviously one of the favorites, but at this point in time in the league, can we say that they are the team to chase at the moment? Yeah, I think it's fair to say that. I mean, that being said, listen, Chelsea are still where they're at, you know, and I know they dropped points this weekend, yeah. but from what I've seen from performances, um, it, it's so close. It's going to be the best title run I think we've seen for a long time. There's three legitimate champions who could be crowned champions, deservedly so, and we know who they are. But, but City, I think from a week-in, week-out basis, the depth that they have, you know, you mentioned the players that were missing this weekend. All right, so what? They have other world-class players or close to world-class players stepping into those positions. Um, you know, I, I look, look at this weekend's game. Look at a guy like Riyad Mahrez, who's in and out of the team, who was the man at Leicester, as we know, but he just steps into this City team a few years ago now and becomes one of the stars. And whenever he plays, to me, he just steps it up, looks fantastic. So, um, yeah, I, I put City as the, the current favorite. But it's 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 tight, obviously, because there's so many good teams. Yeah, Mars and Bernardo Silva, a player who wanted to leave and now probably undroppable uh, for Pep. We should probably talk about the other side, West Ham. I've uh, been very good this year. I don't want to say the run is over, but two losses in the Premier League. Uh, Europa League is obviously going to carry a lot of weight going into these Premier League games. But do you think that maybe that run for, you know, maybe top three or the top four is going to be halted uh, based on what we've seen so far? You know, top four, I think, is always going to be a, a battle for them this year. Um, obviously, they're surprised us all with the way they're playing, playing really great soccer. And even yesterday, yeah. you know, they, they didn't allow Seed to play their game 100%. But you're right, now they're dropping points. But I look at the teams beneath them chasing West Ham. You know, Arsenal, they're, they're going to get better. They're improving all the time. Spurs are still lurking around. and They didn't play this past weekend, of course. Um, so it's going to be a battle. But I, I still think West Ham, I believe in David Moyes. I always have. I think he's a really good manager. And I look at that team and, and you know, their star players from Mikel Antonio. Lanzini's goal in, in, you know, late in the game was just incredible. If he can rediscover his, his form of a couple of years ago, that's a huge, huge bonus for this team. So I think West Ham could surprise and stay in the hunt for fourth place. Forget third place. That's, that's not going to happen. But fourth place, absolutely. Again, a, another great battle this year, I think, in the Premier League for that spot. Yeah, Moyes and West Ham do struggle away to the big boys, but... You know, we saw them beat Liverpool uh, a couple weeks ago. But speaking of which, they beat Southampton 4-0 at Anfield. Uh, an incredible run. I found this stat. Uh, 54 Premier League games without a loss at Anfield for Virgil van Dijk. He was on the score sheet. Having him back at 100%, having Salah scoring, and now Jota adding to that. They have to also be right up there with Manchester City in terms of 1-2. and two. I know we talk about Chelsea, but those two teams right now just seem to be the best of the bunch. 
I think it's because of the way they those guys play, right? They play the sexy brand right. of football. They just attack, attack, they do. attack, and obviously they can defend with you know Big Verge back there. But um, they're a little bit sexier than Chelsea, for example, <laughs> those two teams. Um, but yeah, they're going to be in there. The concern, obviously, for Liverpool is in January and February with the African Cup of Nations losing Mo Salah. Right. Losing, um, you know, Sadio Mane, of course, and maybe Kader, who, who was actually getting really good once again before getting injured. So, you know, that's the issue for them is depth. Will they address that in January? Whereas City have that depth. But man, I mean, that performance on Saturday again, they just bossed Southampton. They really did. And, and Jota's just fit into that team so, so well. I, I don't know how Bobby Firmino gets back into that preferred 11, you know, when he gets healthy. Because, my word, I mean, Jota is just that fox in the box. And him and Salah seem to play so well off each other right now. And we finally saw the midfield, right, that we want to see. And that's Thiago, mm -hmm. Fabinho, and Jordan Henderson. And, and Thiago, for the second straight game, was absolutely brilliant in that match. Just a joy to watch. Again, he's got to stay healthy. That's been the issue for this team. Um, I think Klopp having this uh, quote-unquote problem with Jota and Firmino is a fantastic problem to have because... You have two different dynamics where you have Jota who can come in, who can score goals and kind of take that pressure off of Salah Mane, who didn't score this past weekend. Then you have Firmino who can come in and link with those guys and get them the goal. So anyway, I think it's just a great problem to have uh, for Liverpool. Chelsea, Manchester United, uh, I probably buried the lead here, but Cristiano Ronaldo not starting on the bench. Is that a big deal? Oh, God, I, I, well, according to you know, Ronaldo fans, it is. I mean, this I don't. I personally, I, I don't think it is. Yeah. No, I know. I mean, why can't he be dropped? He's 37 years old, and, and we know what he can do. He, he's one, still one of the greatest goal scorers in world football. But he's allowed to be dropped, and you saw the way that that team was just destroyed by, by um, uh, City and by Liverpool in recent weeks with yeah. him playing. So Michael Carrick or Ralph Rangnick, whoever picked the team, I know Carrick says it wasn't Rangnick, it was it was him, um, had to be more defensive and they put in an okay performance, although Chelsea, let's be honest, should have, you know, scored more than, than the one goal in that match. But, you know, Ronaldo sulks and storms off the field. This is the issue with him, of course. <laughs> but we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, you know, like a 37-year-old shouldn't be playing every single game. He needs to rest at some right. point. And I think when, when Rangnick comes in, officially announced today, I really am curious how he fits into that 11, given how traditionally those Rennick teams love to press and are high-energy teams, which Ronaldo just cannot do anymore. And you know what? To be honest, I don't know if United get that goal with Ronaldo up front. Because the way that we saw Sancho and press Jorginho, I don't know what he was trying to do, trying to bring the ball down on his foot. Uh, but yeah, Rennick coming in officially inter-manager of Manchester United quickly before we finish this off. Uh, your thoughts on United not finding a permanent replacement right now and bringing in an interim instead and then keeping him on as a consultant moving forward. Well, I mean, they've mismanaged it from day one, haven't they? The whole managerial, yeah. you know, it's, it's very frustrating if you're a United fan. I'm assuming the man is still Pochettino and they will get him in the summer. I'm assuming that's what it is. And, mm. and quite frankly, he, he plays a similar style to Ranić as far as that high press and the high energy, right? Um, so I think yeah. that it could be some synergy between those two when, when Rennick steps aside and Posh comes in if that happens um, I don't know uh, interim managers do they often work you know I mean he's completely going to be redefining the way that team works and plays in six months I mean that's a big ask it, it really is but I think they will improve they'll be more organized that's for sure they will get better which is you know they should get better they've been so poor so far but I think this summer will be the, the key but are they going to be good enough to finish top four that's got to be the goal right Finish in top yeah. four, get a Champions League spot, and then you've got the money coming in. You can appeal to the other players coming in. That's the big story, I think, entering the, ne the next uh, four, five, six months. Let's not forget the job that Ollie did when he was interim manager, one of the best interim managers in Manchester United history. James, thanks for this. Right? We'll see you next week. Hey, thanks, Albert. Cheers. Thank you.